Warning, the show you are about to listen to contains spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gober the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host, as always, is... Bonjour, I'm Namio. Yay! And even before we get into the whatever happened this week, I, I think, and, and if I change it to something else, then I'm going to look like a complete jackass. But the title, as suggested by Naomi, is Crazy Eyes. Crazy? Because, okay, I'm sorry... New Jocelyn, which I'm, I'm pretty sure she's new. I don't remember this actress being there at Halloween, but she is fucking creepy. She has crazy eyes. Like the sec- like I hadn't even seen her act. I just saw her in the um, in the thumbnail on Hulu, and I was like, "Who the fuck is that? And what is wrong with her? Because she looks <laughs> crazy." And she hates Franco, uh, which is hilarious. But yeah. Uh, Valerius justified, you know, obviously, a little bit, because from what I gathered, it's 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 a case of she didn't know any better when she was younger, but now that she does, and she realized what happened and how he hurt mommy, yeah, that's that's gonna, you know, color your opinion of him a little bit. And then of course, Sunny calls, Carly runs off, and leaves Jocelyn with Franco because. You know, Sonny needs me. I must run off to him. I mean, Grant. I must slap down that evil bitch. <laughs> yeah, it, it could be seen in both ways. Obviously, you know, and and of course, Morgan didn't help out very much in that regard because Morgan ended up, you know, he eventually, you know, he, he's got tired of all the bullshit. He, he goes to Michael and he vents with Michael and everything. And Michael's like, you know what? I I run this goddamn company. I am going to start up a project. I, I think it has something to do with turning like the old brownstones and doing some, some, some kind of living arrangement or whatever. Uh-huh. And and he not only gave Morgan a place to live, but a job. Which I'm like, it's about damn time. I mean, I'm. it's kind of surprising that nobody thought of this before. Mm-hmm. But hey, it's like, oh shit, punk, we can give Morgan a job. Thank you, Mikey. <laughs> And it tends to work out. And I think he's even worrying, working something out with Kiki, too. Uh, the, yeah, Kiki asked him, but I don't think he, they hammered it out the details yet. Yeah. Because, you know, they're not they're not really wanting to move back in, officially move back in or anything. Because they're still trying to take it a little slower. Yeah. But, so, so it's like, yeah. But that that's probably going to end up working out, I'm sure. Uh, but before Morgan went and moved out completely... He told Franco, yeah, you know what, uh, yeah, my mama, she's all, Sunday's always gonna come first with my mama, you know, because, yeah. you know, that's how she rolls, and, and I can see where that can happen, because the two of them, they're really tight, you know? Yeah, but they're, they're not romantic, and anyone who really knows them knows they're not romantic. I mean, they're basically just best friends. Yeah. But I don't see them ever getting together again. No. It's not likely to happen. It's more likely that Ava and Sonny fuck again than it is for Carly and Sonny. Yeah. Which is really, really... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, thank you. I mean, I mean, it, and it's not because either of them are unattractive or anything. It's just... Ew. No. Yeah. You know, it's like... You know, you know the bitch killed your girlfriend, so... Yeah. Oh, goddamn. So... Yeah, we have all of that, of course. Jocelyn, as, as mentioned, she hates the hell out of Franco. Uh, and, and poor Franco, he's sitting there trying to say, you know, it's all before and everything, and, and it's like, and she's like, I don't care. You, you hurt my mommy. Dun, dun, dun. Me, 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 me. Uh, it's like she's a little brat at times. She really is. It's like, holy shit. And I just thought it was hilarious. Franco grabs him and he's like, help me, Kiki! <laughs> I don't know what to do with this little shithead! Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, oh, to keep around uh, uh, Michael and ELQ, guess who's back in town? Miss, uh... Miss Tracy! Yay! Except, not so yay. 
Because she comes back with this whole story about how she and Luke were going to get an annulment, and 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 because he kept, you know, he it sounded like he was having a threesome with the masseuses. Yeah, and you know, I was instantly suspicious because I'm like, if that had really happened, pretty sure that would have happened on screen. Pretty sure, yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, and sure enough, you know, she convinces Michael to give her another chance at the company. And he says, okay, you know, once I see the annulment paperwork, you know, we'll talk. And she immediately goes out and calls and and talks to Luke. And she's like, our plan worked perfectly. (laughs) Oh yeah. And it's like, Oh God damn it, Tracy. Cause, cause I was suspicious for a little bit. With the whole, oh, I just want to come back. I'll work as a janitor, even or what have you, and and of course, Michael. Michael is smart. Yeah, he is smart in that. You know, he's like, okay, how do you want to do? You say you're going to get an annulment. You need to get the papers. Yeah. Uh. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, so going going back to a sunny momentarily, he did. He did. He did uh, do the. Yeah, goddamn. He went to Anna to question about um, Rick and how he yeah. died, and of course Anna kept stuck to her story and everything. And in comes Duke. You know, and or, or not in comes Duke, but Duke does come oh. up. Yeah. And... and yeah, and it's interesting because um, you know, Duke had gone to Sonny and said flat out, you know, um, me being part of the business isn't good for my, for, for Anna's and my relationship. So, um, uh, (laughs) you know, I'm not, so I'm not going to come back. Um, and, uh, Sonny's like, okay, but at the same time, he kind of throws it in Anna's face, you know, the the whole point of um, of Duke coming to work for Sonny in the first place was to get Julian off the streets. And that hasn't happened, so since she hasn't held up her end of the bargain, why should he hold up his? Exactly. And that's just going to make them implode a little bit. Which, speaking of Julian... <laughs> Oh, we we have confrontations with Julian this week because he's he's confronted by both Sonny and by Duke separately. Yes. And and Julian, at least with Duke, he's like, you know what, you know, I'm I'm, I'm trying to move on past everything. He's trying to start a new life, you know, and all of that. And Duke is like, fuck you, I don't care, I want you dead. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because you know. Uh... Julian actually, you know, offers him a, his hand, and he's like, you know what? Let's just let's just put this behind us and start over. And Duke's like, "Fuck you!" Yeah, which fuck you? <laughs> which, to be fair, Duke is still a little justified because you know, the man, you know, caused your girlfriend, or I think I think he and Anna were married at the time. You know, he caused your wife to miscarry. That that's going to be hard to get over, even after all the time he spent in a Turkish prison. Yeah. You know, so, you know, it, it is difficult. So I can understand, and it's even still a little justified that Duke is, Duke is like, oh, fuck ya. I'm not gonna forgive ya that easily. And I cannot do that accent properly. I'm, I am going to get so much hate mail. <laughs> uh, maybe not. Uh, and of course, when he's talking with Sonny, Sonny somehow lets it slip that, that Ava's at his place or what have you. And Julian, you know, is thinking, Whoa, wait, 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 why? Why are you, are you protecting my sister? I thought you hated her. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, little does he know that he's got a, a little nephew or niece in the oven. Yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of wondering, like, when is that information going to get back to Julian? Oh, I'm sure it's, they'll find a way. It's not like anything is secret for long. <laughs> no. But they'll find out. He will find out eventually. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. 
So, and of course, with with Luke being the actual mob boss and not being the one that is actually funding Julian, then, um, of course, uh, what's her name? Uh, Jordan has to go back to work, and she's... She is just going a little thick with tell me who your boss is, tell me who your boss is, tell me who your boss is. Well, it's it's not really her fault because Anna is being stupid. Like, which, it, you know, is kind of par for the course for Anna because Anna really does suck at her job. Because she's basically, she's she's telling Jordan, okay, um, I'm not going to allow drugs to come back into this town, um, but... Gain Julian's trust right away and find out who his boss is right now. And I'm sitting here going, Anna, do you have any idea how undercover work works? Yeah, Anna, when was the last time you were on an undercover job? And that it's like, wasn't it's, for the WSB or the DVX. You know, the, o- the only way that Jordan's going to earn trust is to do the job that she was, you know, Hired by Julian to do. Mm-hmm. And there's there's no fucking way around that. But Anna is impatient and impulsive. And so she makes this ridiculous demand of Jordan. And Jordan almost, almost gets results because Julian is so beaten down. Yeah. And so ready to just give up and hand the reins to someone else so he doesn't have to fucking deal with it anymore. That he he damn near comes out and tells her, but then some lackey comes in. Yeah, he, he, he just exudes the whole, yeah, you know what, you do this, I'll, 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 I'll put a bullet in your eyes. He yeah. is there clearly for intimidation. Indeed. And it seems to be fucking working so far. I think it would work on me, probably. <laughs> I'm, I'm, oh, I'm big enough a, man to admit that. I just thought of something, though. Um, Julian was asking if the uh, gallery was bugged, but it can't possibly be bugged, because if it was bugged, mm-hmm. the... Um, Luke's lackeys would know by now that Jordan is DEA because she and Anna keep having fucking conversations in public. This is true. And they had more than one conversation in the gallery about it. Yeah, so if they're bugging Julian, then it's by a different means. So it's definitely not bugging the gallery. I mean... To his credit, you know, Jordan yeah, – Jordan. I keep on wanting to call him Jordan. No, it's Julian. Jordan's the black lady. Julian had would not have thought of that because he doesn't know that Jordan is DEA. Yeah. So to their credit, he would have no idea. Yeah, but I'm saying if, if they uh, plan on, like, going that route – I don't know. That, that's going to be, you know, shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah. But again, you know, Anna, stop having conversations with Jordan in public and talking loudly about her being an undercover DEA agent. Not that it fucking matters because, not, you know, nobody can hear anything in this universe unless it's narratively convenient. Yes. Yeah, sound travels as dictated by plot. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. So, so, of course, also Anna... Has has she ends up going to Alexis's house to talk yeah. to her about Julian, but around also all of this, you've got TJ looking for Molly, who is so disgusted with her mother because she feels that Alexis chose Julian over her because she doesn't she you know Molly is correctly believes that Rick was innocent yeah. and he was innocently killed, although <laughs> Rick is still alive, but she doesn't yeah. know that yet. Uh, so, of course, Molly says, you know what, fuck you, I'm going to go move in with Sam. And she does. <laughs> you know, and and what, what really helps Sam is the fact that Sam has a free babysitter. Yes. So she could go on her date with Silas. Yee! Which, yeah, and, which we'll talk about them in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, Molly keeps saying, you know, you know, my mom chose Julian over me, and I'm like, 
you can't really demand that your mom break up with her boyfriend because you don't like him. Like, yeah, that that's not a reasonable. Like, think think back to when your mom was demanding that you not have sex with your boyfriend. Did you like that? No. Did you think no, that was fair? No, 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 you it was did not. not. So maybe don't do that to her, no matter how mad you are. Mm hmm. But that would be, you know, asking for logic. Yeah. Um, Although at least at least Molly can have the excuse that she is a teenager. Yeah, that's true. So that that is excusable because hi, teenager. You know, she 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 has those little shit moments. Hell, we all <laughs> had those little shit moments, you know? Some of us more than others. <clears throat> uh, but then, you know, uh TJ had actually talked to Jordan and um told her that, you know, if she was really on the up and up then she needed to quit working at the gallery. And when Jordan said no, TJ's like, my mom chose Julian over me, too. Yeah, unfortunately. See, I don't see... Okay, if Jordan is really working for DEA, what would be the harm in her telling TJ and just telling him, look, don't tell anybody? I... I mean, who the fuck knows? I mean, where it's... would the harm be in that? I mean, it's like, I you, you would think he would need to know. You know, and then just tell him, you know, oh, wait a minute, I'm seeing where this could go. She tells him he's, she's DEA, and Jean keeps going on his whole anti, you know, uh, you know the, the anti-Jordan uh, thing, and... and TJ blurts it out. Yeah, so I can <laughs> see where that could come, in, come into play. And then Jean would immediately go tell Sonny. Yeah, and then somehow it would end up getting back to Julian. And Luke, or fake Luke. <clears throat> Luke. Yeah, I don't like the name Fluke. I mean, I know I know it fits, but it's just, it's just like I prefer calling him fake Luke. Or well, Fluke, Luke is a is a. Uh, it, it, it's a, yeah, it's, a it, it's a combination of fake and Luke, which I think I think is hilarious. But uh, yeah. <laughs> oh God. Oh so, so yeah, Molly drama and and and, and to to Julian's credit. He was at one point, you know, because he didn't want, you know, you know, Molly and Alexis to be fighting because of him. So he's like, you know what, maybe you should break up with me. And Alexis is like, fuck no. Like, no, I like you, so there. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, Alexis, that's kind of poor choice there. I mean, I mean, if you had to choose between harmony in your family and and and, and shacking up with a mobster... You know, which would you choose, you know? <laughs> well, and the thing is, Alexis has freely admitted more than once that she has terrible taste in men. Yeah, that's so... true. Oh, wow. But... <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, and so, uh, kind of, kind of the, the main theme of this past week was uh, sowing disharmony among couples. Uh, uh, hi, Nina. And because... Uh, First, you had, you know, Franco and Carly, who were moving in together, which is why Franco, you know, was there with Jocelyn, mm -hmm. and Franco apparently bringing, like, all of the stuff ever. Yeah, how many storage units does that fucker have? I know, right? Uh, and it's, like, giant tennis racket because reasons? He's an artist. <laughs> He's um, strange. And Carly at first is like, uh, but then she's like, oh, I love you. Uh, yeah. So it's okay. Um, but, you know, Morgan is there, you know, trying to get under Franco's skin and make him doubt Carly um, because he's still butthurt about Sonny and Ava. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, you know, you know, my dad took the woman I love. He'll do the same to you. Ah, my yeah. um, <laughs> got Oh, God. There so needs to be a scene written in where Morgan does that. Uh, that needs to happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got the vapors. Oh. You know, I mean, like, 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 like one of those one-off episodes or something. Just, just like, you know, just... It's one of those where everybody is out of character because of whatever reason. And they get to do shit like that. <laughs> no, 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 no. What would be better is if Morgan went full YSO. Uh, you everybody betray me. I'm fed up with this world. Yes. Like that's, that's pretty much 
90% of his scenes anyway. Yeah, especially lately. It's like, dude. Uh. Uh, but then you have Anita, who, of course, of course, turns out to be not as sweet and, and innocent as she pretends. Mm. And I knew it. I knew. I I even said the second Silas left to go on his date with Sam, I was like, as soon as he leaves, she's going to get up out of that wheelchair. And sure enough. Yep. She did. And not only did she do that, she apparently has been mobile for a while. Yeah, apparently, like, since the moment she came out of her coma, she could walk. Or whatever. Yeah. Or or at the very least, you know, within a couple of weeks. Yeah. You know, I mean, rehabilitation from being in a coma for 20 years is pretty good. I mean, you're up, you're walking around, you're breaking into your husband's apartment to break his shit, you know. Oh, goddamn. It's like, wow. Well, and, I mean, she is just batshit crazy. I mean, she has got, again, super crazy eyes. And, you know, the difference between uh, Nina and Jocelyn is that Nina's supposed to be crazy. Jocelyn is just creepy. Yeah, uh, she's a creepy bratty child, which I yeah. hope she grows out of. Uh, I, I really sincerely do. <laughs> yeah, well, and it, with Jocelyn, I couldn't really figure out if it was just, uh, if it was the way she's be- currently being written, or if it's that actress, because god damn. Yeah, well, we'll have to see as time goes on. Indeed. Um, but, you know, Nina, she's, you know, putting on this front about how, you know, of course she understands about Silas and Sam, and, you know, it's okay, you know, but uh, go ahead and go out on your date. Uh, Sam is wonderful. You know, Sam, and Sam, uh, when she finds out that Nina is still going to be living with Silas, despite the fact that she now knows about, you know, Silas and Sam, uh, she's a little freaked out, and she just wants to go and talk to Nina about it. And Nina tries to, you know... Be like, Sam doesn't want me to live here anymore. Yeah, and then Sam was like, okay, I, I suggest, you know, I asked if there was, like, you know, a more or a more comfortable situation for her, but that's about it. That's yeah. not trying to throw her out. That's not saying, bitch, get the fuck out of my, of my man's house. Yeah. That's just, you sure you're all right? Uh, but, you know, when, when they're sitting there talking... Nina latches on to the fact that Sam is still wearing her wedding ring Mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of brings that up when she's talking to Silas about how great Sam is and being like, oh, Sam, Sam told me all about her husband. She must have loved him very much. Does it does it bother you at all that she still wears her wedding ring? (laughs) It's like, really? I mean, it's just, ah, and you know what? Silas from what I'm seeing so far, it's looking like maybe it bothers him a little bit, but at the same time, you know his brain is thinking, okay, you know what, yeah, it kind of bothers me a little bit, but I also know that her husband is dead, and and she's, you know, she has to move on at her own pace. Yeah. But, you know, they, but they do talk about it when they're on their date, Mm -hmm. and Sam finally takes her ring off, and she's like, you know, it's it's about time that uh, I let this go, you know, they have an adult conversation about it. Yes. Which is fucking incredible in this universe. Mm. Instead of, like, just being butthurt and talking past each other or not telling each other shit, they yeah. actually, like, talk like adults. Oh, my God. It actually can happen. See, any couple that this is going to happen to is definitely Silas and Sam. True. Because it's like, he, they're, they're definitely two of the more... More, uh, not, I don't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Mature. Uh, yeah, more mature characters that that are written. Yeah. You know, I mean, all these characters they have the different levels of maturity depending on the writer. These two seem to have it more often than most. True. Also, Michael, <laughs> <laughs> because Michael is just you know he's an iron wooby. You know, he's, uh, he's been tight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like. 
I mean, keep in mind, from from his childhood, he's been pretty much a pawn in his parents' lives. He, yeah. he you know, between AJ and Sonny and Carly, the Quartermains and, and Sonny's organization and everything, and it's like, damn. And then he got sent off to prison where he was raped. Thank you, Franco. Even though Franco didn't intend it, you know, it still happened. Ay, god <sighs> damn. So, speaking of, of horrible things that happened that may or may not have been intended, hi, Rafe. Uh, Rafe, yeah, cause, buddy. Uh, yeah, buddy. Uh, let, let, let's, know, let's, let's, let's sit you down, Rafe. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, you're, you're, you're still, I'm sure you're still smarting over the fact that, that Molly put you, quote unquote, in the friend zone. You know, a place that doesn't fucking exist, but that, I digress. You know, you're upset, and I understand that. And then you find out that Gabriel was killed in that car accident, which all the signs are pointing to the to the fact that you did it while you were most likely high on some kind of drug. Cocaine. Yes. Uh, which I, I have to say, because uh, what happens is, you know, Rafe doesn't realize – there's a scene where Rafe doesn't realize that Mina is in the living room, and she kind of catches him. Mm-hmm. Co- and he's like, oh, yeah, I had, a, <laughs> I had a powdered donut for breakfast. And she's like, oh, did you wash it down with some cocaine? Which is, like, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Which was, that was that was by far my favorite line of the week. Um, yeah. And basically she's like, you know what, kid? I have seen this too many times. I understand you're hurting, but this is stupid. And Rafe convinces her not to tell Silas. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, because he's like, you know what, you're right. I don't even need it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't believe you. Um, but I, you know, at this point, I really have zero sympathy left for right. Like, yeah, I, I, you know, and and actually, you know, when I when I think about it, I'm like, you know, kind of my sympathy ran out a while ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, because the thing is, Molly never led him on right at any point she always made sure to let him know i love tj and nothing is ever going to happen between you and me yeah and they shared, when like, one kiss and that was when i think it was like prom and she thought he was going to yeah. be leaving for good yeah and you know she made sure he knew this isn't you know this isn't leading to anything this is goodbye. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so, you know, he has no excuse. I mean, this is not, uh, this is not really even to do with her anymore. It's just about him being stupid, being selfish, and refusing to take no for an answer. Yeah. And it's like, if you're really that upset about it, fucking do something. You know, go to therapy, talk to somebody, or, you know what, ask if you can move somewhere. Yeah, or better yet, you know, make rant videos on the internet. There you go. Oh, uh, although you might want to be careful with yeah, that one. Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Rant, rant, but... rant, about, rant about TV shows that write their characters really, really stupid. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but, you know, and so he was already being really stupid and really selfish, but now he's started doing cocaine because he's still butthurt. Still. It's been over a year. It's like, dude, I've, I've had that kind of thing happen to me before. Everybody's had that kind of thing happen to them before. And you know what? It took me less than a year to get over it. You know, it's just like, you know, suck it the fuck up. It happens to everybody. Fucking move on. Yes. And because he's refusing to, and because he's being a selfish bitch about it, a baby is now dead. Yeah, because he decided to get high and go for a drive. So it's looking like, no, nobody hired anybody. Is just a dumbass kid. And so, yeah, I, I really, I, I have no sympathy for right you know, right now I mean, you know i know he's going through some shit but it's like you know what this is all your own damn fault yeah and you know the fact that he didn't stop 
after that accident. Mm-hmm. It speaks volumes about his character. Yeah. Because, it, like, you know, at that point, it doesn't fucking matter what the consequences are for you. You fucking stop and help the people that you just ran off the goddamn road. Yeah. I mean, I mean even then, you know, because I, I started to think, okay, maybe, you know, the flashbacks are coming back. He realized after the fact what the fuck happened because he was high. So his mind wasn't, you know, he was altered. His mind was altered. Uh-huh. But even then, it's like, you know, you can see the guilt is hitting him hard, which is yeah. good. And I hope good. that leads to good character development for him. I really do. That would be nice, but, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. I don't know at this point. <sighs> and uh, speaking of him and, and TJ ran across him doing some cocaine <laughs> right there in the park. Dude, what the fuck? I know. Seriously. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, most people, most other people who do drugs, like 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 f- you know, fake Luke doing drugs right there in the art gallery. At least you can close the art gallery. Yeah. You can close that off and not let anybody in. Rafe is in a public fucking park. <laughs> not gonna help. Not gonna not 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 good because you got caught by TJ and TJ is giving him the big what the fuck and they're they're throwing barbs on each other at each other you know. He, you know, Rafe brings up the fact that TJ's mother sells drugs, and then DJ brought the fact that his father was a murderer and, and a psychopath, thought he was a vampire and shit. And Rafe sucker punches the hell out of TJ. Well, and, uh, but there was a very specific line that set Rafe off, because TJ looked at him and said, how long is it going to be before someone innocent winds up dead because of you? Or some words to that effect. Yeah. And that that was when Ray punched him. Oh, yeah. Because um, little does TJ know, it's already happened. Yeah. And, and, of course, Rafe is feeling extremely guilty about it, but he can't easily beat the shit out of himself for it. So, you know, yeah. somebody reminds him of it, well, he's going to react the first way he thinks, which, in his case, sucker punch. It's like, oh, damn, kid. <laughs> it's just, damn, kid. Oh, oh speaking, of, uh, speaking of punches, mm-hmm. uh, we should talk about Levi and Nathan. <laughs> oh, yes, Levi and Nathan and Maxie. <laughs> uh, because the custody hearing was this week. Yeah, but before that, uh, oh, there yeah. was this amazing scene. So Nathan is running shirtless in the park because, of course, he is. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> Levi's there doing his yoga or whatever the fuck he does. Um, and uh, they talk about, they start talking, and uh, Nathan brings up, you know, that he saw Maxie, and then he talked to her, and that they went out for drinks afterwards, and then he's he's like, yeah, I had some ribs, and I didn't finish, I didn't finish them off myself, and like, Probably second favorite line of the week is like, Maxie ate my meat and she liked it. Yes. <laughs> and Levi punches him. <laughs> yes. That is awesome. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. Oh, uh, hilariously you know, like, awesome. Oh, although I'd rather see Levi get punched. It would be nice, but it was it was hilarious to see Levi that ruffled. Um, and you know the the. You know, before that, the two of them had been kind of squaring off because uh, Levi's like, I know you like Maxie. And <laughs> Nathan's basically like, bitch, what you going to do about it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. And then, and that was right before uh, little Gabriel's funeral. Yeah. Which, well, well, let's touch on that. Otherwise, we may forget later. Um. But, you know, that happened, and, of course, this is after Sabrina, you know, her mind breaks, and Patrick gets her out of it, and Juan, her cousin Juan comes in for the funeral, mm-hmm. and the funeral was it, was, it was a beautiful funeral, and, and not a dry eye in the house, there or over here. Yeah. Um, and at, at the end of it all, though, Sabrina, you know, Patrick is like, look, you know, go go with your cousin. Go to Puerto Rico and, 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 and just recuperate for a little while. You're going to need yeah. it. You know, and, and meanwhile, Patrick stays behind in Port Charles because, well, he does have a, you know, 
he's got to work, even though I, I guess I guess for Sabrina it might be a little easier because they've got how many nurses and as opposed to how many doctors? Yeah. Yeah. I well, don't know. well, one less nurse now. <laughs> but yeah. Well, okay. Well, technically two less nurses at least for a little while, but. But you know things things have to happen. So Sabrina is, is is off recuperating for a little while with Juan, which is always nice to see Juan come back. He he he's back from when when I first started watching the show and he was doing starting up his music career and everything. He was pretty cool. Oh, uh, so um, well well I say pretty cool. Now I'm gonna watch. I'm probably gonna go research the character again. I'm gonna be like, okay, what the fuck was I saying that for? <laughs> Uh, oh, and I yeah, I don't really know anything about him. I just know he kind of shows up every once in a while to be like, "Hi, I'm doing a cameo," and then disappears. Yes, cameo. <laughs> yeah, and and it does help that the, one of the reasons why he does get scenes with Elizabeth is, well, one, the two characters do have a bit of a history. They're not. I don't think they were ever romantic, but they were among you know they were friends because. He was he was dating uh, Emily Quartermain at the time, and Emily and Elizabeth were good friends. So, so of course they got to know each other. Plus, the actors who play Elizabeth and Juan are actually married. <laughs> so, of course, gonna get a scene with a husband and wife because you know why not? Oh, uh, so the funeral went and happened, and and Levi, he it looked like he was starting to come around a little bit, maybe. At least in terms of that kind of thinking, because he had yeah. this, because of you know his whole uh, everything happens for a reason in this universe, and yada yada yada. And they, uh, yeah, and after the, after the funeral, he's like, you know what? I'm sorry, I said that because that was stupid and I was wrong. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, and and of course in the in the back where nobody could see him, Rafe was there. You know, and he he's just sitting there like, oh my god. You no, know, yeah. it's like yeah. I'm not quite to the level that I would be with Sonny if Sonny was in his position, but yeah, you you earned all of that guilt, buddy. You earned every last drop of guilt that is currently wrenching out of you right now. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, to keep on with Maxie and Levi now. <laughs> oh. So the, the custody hearing happens, and it's a day sooner than it was originally scheduled. Well, judge comes in, come to find out that, however, however he found out, which I have my suspicions, he found out that Nathan actually lied for Maxie. Yes. And he was going, to, and he had called Nathan up to the stand to testify whether he did or did not putting him under oath and at the risk of perjury. And in the end, both Maxie and Levi stepped up and and both made their cases, you know, for Ma- for Maxie to have Georgie, or at least have at least joint custody for Georgie, you know, thus getting Nathan off the hook. But at the end the judge is like, you know, after all of this, you know, you 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 are still not ready. So yeah, another six months. <sighs> that sort of thing. Which, of course, you know, Maxie goes running off. She ends up running off to Lulu, who she and Dante, you know, they, they have their things together. And, oh, oh, there's a little bit more with Dante we can get into in a moment. But, but you know, they, they reaffirm the decision that Lulu is going to go try this procedure to see if she can actually carry a child or what have you. Yeah. And, and, and after all of that is said and done and Dante's off to work or what have you, Maxie comes in and... and, and you know, she lets Lulu know what happened, and they they start having a moment there. Yeah. Uh, but before all of that, uh, Dante goes and confronts Sonny over everything. Well, mostly over uh, Sonny hurting Olivia. Yeah. Because Dante's basically like, "Bitch, you do not mess with my mama." Yeah, and and. And it seemed like Sonny was about ready to blurt everything out to yeah. to to Dante, but then here comes Carly. Yeah. And it's like, you know what? You know, you know, when the moment when Franco has had his moments of, you know, why not tell people, why not let people know what happened there? 
you know, before the inevitable using Michael as as a reason to not let people know what Sonny did or, or what happened as far as, you know, Connie's death. You know, you know, I, 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 I can agree with Franco because you know what? Yeah, Michael is going to be heartbroken. Yeah, there is going to be some family damage. Sure. But it's 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 gonna be more everybody else is going to put Sonny on the bus and put him on his island and everybody else, yeah, they're gonna take some time to heal, but they'll move on. Yeah. You know. So it it's it's not going to destroy their family as much as Carly probably fears it will. Yeah, there will be some damage. Yeah, there there's going to be some heartbreak. There's going to be some anger, and all of it is going to be directed at Sonny and Ava. But it, it's still not going to be as bad as Carly would fear it would be. I mean, yeah. and I know she's trying to protect Michael, and and you know what? That's fine. That really is fine. That's admirable. You want to protect your kid, but you're not also not doing him any favors by hiding the information from him. You know, you're not doing any. You know, you're doing no favors by lying to him, Sonny, Carly, <laughs> and it's just, just ah. Uh. And Franco, you keep letting her talk you into keeping it secret. Uh, of course, Ava is you know keeping it secret too because she damn near told Kiki. Mm-hmm. Because you know, Kiki kept you know kind of badgering her like, "Why are you staying here? This doesn't make sense." And Ava's like, I have no choice. And when Kiki's like, why? Mm-hmm. And she's like, uh, cause Julian, uh, look over there, something shiny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> pretty much, it pretty much is that. And it's like, and I don't think Kiki really bought it very much, if at oh, all. Kiki didn't buy it for a second. Kiki's not stupid. No. Yeah, Kiki, Michael, Silas, and Sam. They they are they are the four most savvy characters on the show right now. Yeah. I mean, and I understand you can't have every character be super savvy, otherwise it might be well, I don't know. I don't know. If you can write it well, you could have an interesting show, but but even still, you know, you you got to have a variety of characters, I suppose. So not every character can be super savvy. Yeah, uh, but not every character needs to be super stupid either, which that's is true. what it feels like. <laughs> A lot of the times it feels like it's what happens on this show. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, so uh, we should we should get back to uh, Nina. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, Nina gets out of her chair and starts monologuing like crazy. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> talking about how... And, and monologuing to uh, her nurse, Rosalie, who's apparently in on this with her. Yeah, and like I'm, try- I've been trying to figure out what the hell's in it for Rosalie because she's just kind of sitting back, going whatever. Uh, yeah, as Tina's like, I'm gonna get revenge on everyone. Everyone, all will feel my wrath. <laughs> yeah, and it's like really, I mean, I mean, uh, you don't believe half the shit you're saying about. Oh, I understand. I was in a coma for twenty years. You thought I was dead. She really doesn't believe that. And in Rosalie, at least to begin with, it seemed like, yeah, okay, yeah, you know what? He was in a coma for 20 years. You, you were in a coma for 20 years. You know, she seemed to be like the voice of reason, but eh, for whatever reason, she keeps going with Nina. And so Nina like, breaks out a list, and she's like, I'm going to get revenge on my mom. I'm going to get revenge on Silas. I'm going to get revenge on Sam. I'm going to get revenge on Ava. I'm going to get revenge on Kiki. And even Rosalie's like, Kiki never did anything to you. And yeah. basically Nina's like, she exists. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, that, that's where you go from uh, laughably enjoyably to holy shit, bitch, be scary. Yeah, but uh, like she she has that crazy routine down really well. <laughs> yeah, from what I understand, Michelle Stafford, uh, I th- believe she used to be on Young and the Restless, where I want to say she played another psycho character. Yay! So it's like, okay, are you guys really typecasting her? Really? I mean, <laughs> come on. I mean, don't get me wrong. She's doing a good job, but typecasting really? Come on. <laughs> Uh, but it's not like the first time we've seen this before because I've heard so many comparisons to current Franco to uh, Todd Manning when he was on the show. 
So, uh, both well, played by the same actor. I was going to say that... Well, and I read I read somewhere that uh, the popularity of Todd was the reason they brought back that actor. And I'm yeah. like, if that's, like, the reason, why have him be Franco? Like, why... Why Frank? And um, the only thing I can think of as to why specifically they brought back Franco is because they must have known they were going to bring back Jason. Because obvious, obviously Jason is coming back. Uh, oh, yeah. I think he's been recast, and you know they've been teasing the shit out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what Jason thinks of Carly and Franco being an item. Yeah, that's going to be a thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. But, yeah. Uh, so, so I, I, where, where were we going with that? <laughs> well, I don't remember. Uh, um, uh, but, yeah, Nina, being, being bug nuts and, and yeah. crazy and insane. And at least because I... I haven't seen today's episode yet, uh, but uh, yesterday's episode, she, like, faked a fall. <clears throat> yeah, that's, like, real. it's, like, well, I mean, it looked like it might work, maybe. I mean, well, I mean, she, of course, she has to do something to cover because there was that, uh, uh, like, glass plaque or whatever, <clears throat> um, that uh, Silas got when he graduated medical school. That apparently she broke the first time when she broke into his ha- into his apartment, and now she broke a second time. And so she's gonna need to you know cover up, mm-hmm. the, you know, that she did that. You know, f- find find some plausible explanation. So I guess you know, yeah, I fell. But you know, she basically she was trying to ruin Sam and Silas's date. Oh, yeah, because, you know, hey, when a clingy, jealous girl. Sure. Yeah. Clingy, jealous, psycho bitch girl. Yep. Pretty much there. <laughs> uh, although, technically, that does run over from the, from the uh, week we normally do, so it's like a week and a day. There you go. <laughs> Yay. Oh, God. So, yeah. But uh, if, if we are going to be covering the uh, Monday episode as well, I do want to bring up the fact that Nathan is basically suspicious of Levi for the reason everybody else is suspicious of Levi, that he thinks Levi was the one who tipped off the judge. Well, Levi's the only one it could have been. Yeah. And Levi didn't didn't full-on deny it either. Yeah. And, and well, I think it was Nathan who said something like, <laughs> yeah, the only people who really talk the most about evidence are the people that are guilty yeah and you know well and the first thing Nathan said was you know there were only a few people in the room there was me Maxie and Diane none of us would have blabbed you were the only other person that even knew Mm -hmm. so process of elimination you're fucking guilty and I'm like you know (sighs) Like, what the hell is Levi's game? I don't know yet. Uh, it has something to do with control, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Probably. But, yeah, he... It's like he is so committed to Maxie not getting Georgie back. Yeah, it's like, why? What is in it for you, other than just getting your rocks off and controlling her? Uh, maybe he just really doesn't like kids. <laughs> maybe. Know. I don't know. I mean... Well, well, at least, you know, not to the point to where he'll, you know, he doesn't feel bad when one dies. Yeah. At least eventually. Mm. Oh, and, of course, Maxie and Lulu, they have their talk, and, and Maxie holds Rocco for a little bit. He's so adorable. Yee! <laughs> uh, and, of course, Carly is there. You know, she, she does the thing with Ava, and she... She she and Ava have their own back and forth and and Ava does this whole over dramatic grabs like it looks like a letter opener or something and she's like I got you right but I got you Carly and Carly's like like bitch what you saying <laughs> like bitch yeah Carly basically dares her is like what the hell are you gonna do yeah and it's like damn <laughs> say what you will about Carly she has balls 
Yeah, she does. She got balls of steel. I don't know. I, I have I have I didn't like Carly at first when I first started watching, because uh, I found her really abrasive. But I have grown to really like her as a character. Yeah, she does do that. Carly, as I've known her over the years, she does have her good times. She, ha- she has her times when I can really get behind her and I can really enjoy her character. But then there are other times I'm like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean. Like, oh my god, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's like, she was introduced. You know, she was a nursing student, came to Port Charles. And she, one of the things, first thing she did was to get revenge on her mother for abandoning her as a baby. So she slept with her mother's husband. Oh, that's great. And they got busted, uh, naturally, you know. So, <laughs> oh, and I seem to remember, like, I don't, I didn't watch it live. I watched like clips of it, but it, it was like Carly at the time was was just so hate filled towards Bobby that that she was just like, you know what? I was probably a lot better fuck than you ever were, and it's like, oh shit. I mean, obviously, you know, Carly and Bobby, they ended up making up and, and getting, you know, and getting to the point to where they are now, thankfully. Yeah. But it took a while. Hmm. Oh, yeah. But but that's definitely the point where it's like, yeah, no. You know, when Michael was kidnapped, you know, when he was a baby, he was kidnapped. And in, in fact, it was not because of AJ or Sonny at this point. It was because of uh, Tony Jones. Who also had went a little bit off the deep end because, well, you know, he was the one in the middle of everything and his heart had been tossed around and everywhere. So oh. so he went crazy, kidnapped Michael for a little bit. And that was one of those times, okay, you can get behind Carly because hi, mother, child, you yeah. know, you know, you can get behind Carly on that. And then she goes and shacks up with Sonny. Hey. <laughs> He's like, Jeevas woman. Although she – obviously she did eventually marry Jasper Jax, who, you know, I think was a better choice. I have, I've not seen much of the character since I was originally watching, but when I was originally watching, Jax was, I think, a pretty decent guy. Not perfect, but pretty decent. I don't think I've seen him at all. Uh, if you watched the Nurse's Ball last year, he popped up for a little bit. I didn't see the Nurse's Ball last year. I started watching after. Ah, that's right. But yeah, but Jax, he's, he's one of those Aussies. You know, you know, you know, Jerry Jax is his brother, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although he did, he did get mentioned a couple of times this week because uh, um, Jocelyn said that uh, she had found out about Franco's past from her dad. Mm-hmm. And uh, Michael, when he found out that Franco was living, uh, moving in with Carly. Uh, his first instinct was to call Jasper. Yes, Mr. Jax. Mr. Jasper Jax. And uh, Kiki talked him out of it. Which, you know, <laughs> which Kiki's like, right. Wait, 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 wait. Like, well, and Kiki had a valid point. She's like, you know, it really doesn't matter how much you dislike this. Carly's going to do what Carly wants to do. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I hate it when you're right, but you're right. <laughs> <laughs> So see, Michael needs somebody like Kiki. Otherwise, yeah. he'll he'll go off and do something stupid, and and you know, and, and he has all the best intentions. It's just when his when his head is not so level, when he does he makes stupid mistakes. Yeah. Uh, however, unlike Morgan, Morgan's head always seems to be on level. That's true. He is his father's son, after all. <sighs> oh, hey, god damn! So that is. That is, I, unless we've missed something, um, I don't think we've missed anything. But as far as I'm aware, that is pretty much it for this this uh, past week plus. Past week plus, because we also covered uh, Monday. Because yeah. we're recording this on a Tuesday. So, yeah. so yeah, so it's last week plus Monday. And um, so that... It's gonna be it's gonna be fun to see where everything goes. I I always say that. Oh, it's going to be fun to see where everything goes. <laughs> it always is fun. <laughs> yeah, it always is. So, so yeah, I want to see. I like to see what they do with Nina. I am more curious about what Levi's background is now at this point because it's like he first came on. It's like, oh God, I hope he doesn't stick around for long. But he's been sticking around and he's been doing all this underhanded stuff. 
And it's like, okay, what makes you tick, Aussie boy? What makes you tick? Because there are rumors that are going around that he's like Max's biological son or, or, or Silas and Nina's son who somehow survived the, the thing. I mean, he would be about that age, I think, give or take. I don't know. That would be weird. I don't – you know what? Whatever. I, yeah. I mean, hey no – I mean, hey, you know, there was an All My Children storyline where Erica Kane had an abortion or, you know, was supposed you know, had the abortion, but somehow the fetus still lived and grew up to be one of her daughters. Um, sure. I don't know how. To be fair, I think that original storyline was more in the 70s. So who knows? They, they might have done things differently back then. I don't know. <laughs> I am not an abortion doctor. I don't think I ever want to be because just not my cup of tea. Sorry. Uh, oh, so yeah. So that 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 should about cover it. Uh, so with that, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here because I know it's gonna take a few minutes for me to ramble off certain things. Um, so where can we find you, Namio? You can find me on Tumblr at Namio's Corner. You can find me on Twitter at, at Naomi Washburn. You can find me on the fabulous rtgomer.com. And you can find me on uh, Etsy at Namio Stained Glass. All right. And you can find me on the social media at the Twitters and the Tumblers at gomer 21 X. You can find my material at rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. Go check out both places. They have some really good stuff there. And if you want to help support the show, because, you know, we, we do this, we put this out there, and it doesn't initially cost anything. But if you'd like to help us monetarily and throw money at the show for better equipment, upgrade equipment, and all of that other fun stuff that we can do to make the shows better, then go visit patreon.com slash gomer to one double X. Every you know, every little bit helps. It'll go towards making the shows better. And and of course, as it really shouldn't be said too awful much because it's kind of an inferred thing, but I'm gonna say it anyway. In addition to you know, one of the things that will help the show is a new studio space, one that is devoid of possible children running around. <laughs> so I could be as loud as I need or want. Uh, and I could make my own schedule a little bit better. But that that is something that, that any kind of Patreon money would go to. So if again, if you want to donate to that cause and, and everything there, just go to patreon.com slash gomer to one double X. And if you want some fabulous artwork or some kick-ass award-winning animation, go check out my girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, over on patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Toss some money at her, you'll get some artwork. Toss enough money at her, you'll get a 30-second animation. Ooh. Remember, as I said, she is an award-winning animator. So and go, she's awesome. She is. She is very awesome and, and very talented, too. <laughs> oh, so again, thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Namio signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.